What are your pupils again? Those are the holes, the black holes that are in your eye that allow light in. And one thing that's cool about the pupils is that they can be made larger or smaller depending on how much light you need to pass through them. So in very, well, actually, let me ask you this. Here's a pupil. Here's another pupil. What surrounds this pupil? The iris. So let's do green eyes. A person with green eyes has green irises that surround this pupil. The irises don't shade in shape. Try that again. But the pupil does. Which one of these is in bright light and which one of these is in the dark? Could you figure that out? So with bright illumination, our pupils get smaller. In dark, they get larger to allow for more light to pass in. And this is a reflex response to regulate how much light enters the eyes. It can be damaging to your eyes to have too much light enter. So this keeps too much from entering the eyes and allows you to see better in dark conditions. So these is the same thing here, right? But we have are gonna of course name some of the muscles that control this, right? So actually the controlling of this pupil size is regulated by muscles that either um, dilate or constrict the pupil area. So this one out here, this is our dilator pupillae. This is the muscle. When it constricts, it pulls the eye, um, it pulls the iris out and dilates the pupils. This muscle here, this is our sphincter. Sphincters tend to constrict things. Um, you have various sphincters in your body. This muscle, when it contracts, it, const it pulls this way and constricts the pupil to make it smaller. Now, what regulates these two muscles? Well, if I tell you that they're smooth muscles, this is a smooth muscle, as is this, what does that tell you about how they're regulated? Well, let's answer a few questions about that. Could you answer about this reflex that occurs in response to light? You could shine a light on your eyes and you'd see this happen. You'd see your pupils constrict with a bright light sh shown on them. They go in a dark room, they get bigger. That is a reflex. Is that reflex autonomic or somatic? Is it spinal or cranial? And what do you think? Can you tell me if it's monosynaptic or polysynaptic? Let's see if you can do this. All right, it's autonomic. How do we know that? Because it was smooth muscles. Smooth muscles are the effector or target. When we have smooth muscles as the effector, it has to be an autonomic reflex. Skeletal muscles are the effectors for somatic reflexes. That's how you know that. Is this cranial or spinal? Well, this is happening up in the cranium. We don't have this travel down to the, the um, spinal cord to create this reflex. This is a cranial reflex. The other reflexes we've seen, so the knee jerk reflex, for example, that happens in the spinal cord. That would be a spinal reflex. Lastly, since this is an autonomic reflex, it's polysynaptic. We know that there is an autonomic ganglion. I can't spell. Autonomic ganglion. So there has to be more than one synapse in this.
pathway. So could you now, and actually you already told me, I think if we've done this, right? We've talked about what happens to your pupils with sympathetic and parasympathetic activation. Could you predict which is gonna happen in which situation here? So with the decreased light intensity, you're gonna have increased sympathetic activation, which is gonna cause the pupils to dilate. This can also happen with increased stress, right? With the fight or flight response, but decreased light intensity is the main um, stimulus for this. It's dark. Your pupils need to get bigger to let in enough light to be able to see. With increased light intensity, parasympathetic stimulation occurs. The stimulus is increased light intensity. It could also be, you know, you're sitting at your table chilling, eating food, but the main stimulus for this is gonna be light intensity. Okay, let's draw this. So let's draw this as a, what? A reflex, right? So our stimulus is going to be, we're gonna to do too much light. So high, light. That's our stimulus. We'll put that in a box if we wanted to. That's going to stimulate what? What's our receptor? Photoreceptors, right? Now, photoreceptors actually talk to bipolar cells, then ganglion cells. We are just going to um, have that be called the optic nerve. Those are the axons of the ganglion cells that are the input signal to the brain. This is actually gonna go, so this part you probably won't be able to do. Um, normally, the optic nerve travels to the thalamus. It, it does travel to the thalamus. It's also gonna travel to the midbrain where there are cranial nerve um, nuclei that are going to, let's see, so let me actually do this. This is our what, our integrator. These cranial nerve nuclei are going to result in an output signal. This is actually our oculomotor. A cranial nerve that you know about controls the extrinsic eye muscles as well, but it also controls what? So our effector or target of this pathway is we need to constrict our pupils, right? So it's gonna be our sphincter pupillae muscles that are going to then constrict the pupil. This is the response. There is a ganglia in here as well, which you know because this is an autonomic um, reflex. This is going to be, you don't need to know this, it's the ciliary ganglion. You should know there is a ganglion there because there has to be with autonomic nervous system. 